tomorrow marks 21 years since the John Swat passed away. Enough time for someone who was born on that day to be an adult now. But his teachings are still with us. And of course the monastery he founded is still here, offering an opportunity for us to practice. So it's good to extend thoughts of gratitude his way. And of course the best expression of the Gratitude is to continue the practice, to take his teachings in and make them your own. Because each of us fabricates his or her experience. And so our understanding of what he had to say, what he had to teach, is going to be filtered by the way we fabricate things. Which is why the Buddha, when he was teaching Rahula, started out by saying, be truthful. In other words, try to register correctly what you experience and what you're doing, and then be reflective. Look on how well what you've learned is helping you. And if it's not helping you, there are two problems, possibly. One problem is that what's coming in from outside may not be good. The other is that you haven't learned how to put it together well. A lot of times both things are the problem. When you make up your mind that you really are convinced by what the Buddha had to say, you want to listen more carefully to what he had to say, and every teaching that's in line with what he had to say, to make sure you get the message right, and then figure out something is wrong still. Where is it wrong? It's wrong in how you're putting things together, and you have to learn how to correct yourself. When the teacher is there to help make suggestions, give pointers, but ultimately the work is up to you in being truthful and being reflective, and being observant as you're reflective. And John Swan made this point again and again, and you can imagine all the forest of John's. We talk about how much you have to depend on yourself, because each of them had to depend on themselves. Most of them came from very poor backgrounds. And John Swan apparently had eight siblings, born in a very poor part of Thailand. And what he made of himself was what he made of himself. In other words, he had to pull himself up by his bootstraps. And you can imagine how audacious that may have seemed in Thai culture in those days, that the forest tradition took birth among people who were at the bottom of the social ladder. But they saw that the Buddhist teachings were available and that they were good. They decided to bring themselves up to be worthy of those teachings. So we try to take their example and listen to what they have to say. One of John Sweat's favorite sayings was that each of us has only one person, ourselves, that we're responsible for. We have to be responsible for listening to the teachings properly looking at our behavior, seeing where our behavior doesn't measure up, and then figuring out what we can do to make it measure up. It's a matter of skill, and you can't make other people skillful. The best you can do is give them advice, set a good example. But it's up to each of us to reflect on what we're doing, how skillful we are, be responsible for ourselves. The problem is all too often we're trying to be responsible for other people. We're trying to say they should do this this way and they should do that that way. And our own our own work gets tossed off to the side, neglected. Like right here. Focusing on your breath. No one else can focus your mind on the breath. I can stay here and keep repeating over and over again, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. But that doesn't focus your mind on the breath. It gives you an idea of maybe what to do. 
but it's up to you to have the mindfulness and the alertness, and to make your mindfulness and alertness better and better, so you really can stay with the breath. It's the element of ardency. That's your, what you're responsible for. And you're doing this because you know that your thoughts and your words and deeds are your contribution to your experience of the world and also to everybody else around you. So in looking after your own well-being, your own skill, you're helping other people as best you can. This relates to another comment that John Swart made one time. There was a teacher in Thailand who had made the statement that all the Buddhist teachings boil down to, don't be selfish. And the Thai way of saying that is, don't look out after yourself, the implication being that you should look out after others. They even took that phrase and made a little Buddhist sketch out of it. In the Thai it's Ya Hin Ka Tua. Ya, which means don't, became the head, Hin became the neck, Ka became the shoulders and arms and torso, and Tua became the, the legs. A little diagram you can see all over Thailand, because the teacher was famous. And John Sua took issue with that. He said, you do have to look after yourself. Who else is going to look after you? The question is, you look after yourself in a skillful way. If you really look after your true best interest, it's not going to be harming anybody. All too many people see that our choice in life is either that we help ourselves or we help others. We can't do both. But the Buddha's insight was that if you really are helpful, to yourself, it's going to spread out. It's going to be helpful to other people, too, because you're looking for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody. If you harm others, it's going to come back and harm you. So we have to work on this skill. And it is a skill that requires work. It's not that we jump from being totally unskillful to totally skillful all at once. It's Success by approximation. You work at it, and you find yourself getting more and more perceptive, more and more sensitive, more and more discerning as the practice progresses. As you keep committing yourself to the practice and reflecting on what you're doing, and then taking what you've noticed and plow that back into your next decision for what to do. So you do look out after yourself. This is what that phrase Atahiyatano nato means you're your own mainstay. You have to depend on yourself. This relates to another teaching that John Swett made one time. We were just getting the monastery started. And he said one day, we're not here to get other people. We're here to get ourselves. Now, if other people come along and they like to the way we're practicing and they want to practice too, we're happy to have them join us. But we're not going to change the Dharma to attract people, to get other people. Because if you do that, you lose yourself. So the practice keeps pointing back here, inside, trying to practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. And so when you're practicing mindfulness, what is it? Keeping track of the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. And the points inside, body, feelings, mind, mental qualities, all in and of themselves, right here. That's where the work is to be done. That's your frame of reference. Other people are just thoughts in that frame of reference. They're not the focus. It's what you're doing, because what you're doing is what shapes your experience and shapes the world around you. So we're going to shape it well and take responsibility. That means being truthful. And admit 
admitting your mistakes. The term in Thai for responsibility, kwam rapi chom, means that you're willing to accept what was right and what was wrong. In accepting it, you admit that you're the one who made the choice, and you're the one who's going to have to face the consequences. So when the, the consequences depend on what you do, pay careful attention to what you're doing. And don't let your focus get distracted outside. There's an aspect of the practice which has an impact on other people, but it comes down to the qualities of your mind. You want to be unburdensome. You want to be modest. You want to be content with what you've got in terms of material things. That has an impact on other people, but it's a quality you develop in your mind. And there's that image of the acrobats. You keep your balance, it helps other people keep their balance. As you focus inside, And keeping your balance means being focused on any of the four frames of reference and establishing a mindfulness. It helps other people maintain their balance. It's too bad that that particular sutta doesn't have an image to go with the opposite side, which is that when you are helpful to other people, it comes back and it develops good qualities in your own mind. Kindness, goodwill, patience, equanimity. So it's not the case that we don't think about other people at all. We think about how not to be harmful and how we can benefit by helping them. And in that way, the real skill develops, which is how to find happiness in a way that harms no one. How you can depend on yourself to do this, be responsible, look after yourself. Or in John Swat's words, get yourself. That's the task for each of us. And as we focus on that task, that's how we show our gratitude to the people who've maintained the teachings of the Buddha, maintained the Dharma through all these generations. And specifically for John Swat, for his desire to start a place where people of all races and nationalities can come and practice together in an environment that's conducive to the practice. So we've got the trees, we've got the, the orchard. That's conducive. Try to make your attitude conducive as well. Keep looking inside to see how you can improve what's inside. And when you take responsibility like that, okay, good things are bound to come. <laughs>